Okay, good evening again. Uh, and we have uh, Florida a and uh, Coach Robert McCallum, and two student athletes, uh, Desmond Williams and Marcus Barham. Uh, Coach, congratulations on your season. Uh, would you begin by, uh, you know, giving a, a synopsis on the game? Well, uh, first of all, I want to congratulate uh, uh, Hampton on, on their season, on uh, the regular season championship and uh, the win tonight. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get off to the type of start you know, that we expected and that we've come to expect over the past uh, uh, five or six games. Of course, we've won four of our last five coming into, into tonight's game. But true, true to form, our guys rallied and they came out the second. Well, actually, we, we thought we regained the momentum uh, at the end of the first half. And we're down 18 points. We talked about getting it to 10 points by halftime. We did that. We actually got it to nine. And so I couldn't be prouder of the way our guys fought. They really fought when they competed the second half. And unfortunately, it, uh, it wasn't quite enough. Thank you, Coach. Coach, and I have a question for Coach. Coach, you had used quite a few different lineups. And even when uh, Brendan went down, still had to switch things up. Just talk about what was your strategy going into uh, knowing that you were using, you know, different lineups and, and non-usual personnel? Well, in some ways it was similar to, to last night. We went with a smaller lineup for most of the second half. And once we fell behind, we, we needed to have a, a, a quicker, uh, more athletic team on the floor. So we put, uh, put Nas, Nasir Kaur in and went really small. And then, of course, they also went with a smaller lineup at times. And so it was just sort of a, a chess match. We needed to do it out of necessity, and it helped us uh, to cut, cut in that deficit. And uh, so then we played with that lineup for much of the second half because we still trailed. And, uh, and then when they went small, uh, it, it, it ended up being the best lineup. So what we tried to do, if an opponent has a, a, a small lineup, then we have a, a set of uh, plays offensively we like to run, especially the center around, around Des. If they have a bigger lineup, a bigger, slower guy, got in Des, we have another set of plays we like to run. So it was a lot of just um, chess matches going back and forth, but it was out of necessity. Yes, can you talk about the differences in the two halves for you? Were they playing differently in the first half? Um, well, obviously, it's a tale of two halves. Um, I came out the first half kind of sluggish, not being as aggressive. And um, I guess the second half, after going into the half down nine, um, I came out with, I guess, a different mindset. I really don't care who guards me. Because when I make it up in my mind that I'm going to do what I want to do, it really doesn't matter. So the second half was just another, um, just a different gear of me just zoning in and knowing that I had to do whatever I had to do to play harder and keep the momentum our way. Because obviously it was a home game for them. And so we couldn't let the crowd get behind them too much. So I just did what I could do to like help my team. Uh, Luke Williams from the Black College Sports Space. Coach, what did you want in that last possession when Nasir ended up driving? What, what did you, I know you had a timeout to kind of set it up. What were you looking for? Well, we were looking for just uh, flares, flares for jump shoots. So we got the ball to the middle of the court and uh, flare screens. And the flare wasn't there, a slip. And uh, they defended, they defended the, play, the play well. Going back to the talk toward the end of the game. Because last minute and a half, uh, I might lose one shot or something like that. Giving it up, looking to get it back, not getting it back. What's going on? Um, first, first and foremost, um, it's never about me. It's never about the individual when it comes to the team. I have total, total like trust in my coaching staff as well as my teammates. Like, it doesn't revolve around me. So like not getting us one shot or whatever, that wasn't in my mind. It was just. I trust my teammates. I trust my coaches to have decision. So they drew up the plays, and I had total faith in whatever they said and whatever shot was taken. Marcus, just talk about the leadership that it took for you all 
as seniors for this team not to get down in the first half? What was what was your motivation to the other players on the team? That we've been in the same situation a hundred times before and we weathered the storm. So that's basically it. Go back to that last year and a half, and you're growing up place, and you're saying, I got confidence in my back. I mean, you're making him an equal in this place, but you set it up for somebody else. What's going on with you? I don't know if I understand your question. Last minute and a half. Right. Liz gives up the ball, does not get it back very much. Now, these are plays that you drew up. Right. Uh, do you use them as a decoy? Is, is, is what? No, I think I understand clearly your questions now. I mean, Dez is an outstanding player. Dez averaged somewhere between 18 and 20 points a game. The guy to my left averaged 17 points a game. So we're not, we're not a one-man show. And so we have four guys on the floor, most, most instances, capable of making a shot. And so Dez took, Dez had 22 attempts. So the least of my concern, the least of Dez's concerns, is that he didn't get, as he already answered, he didn't get a particular shot. And uh, I, I'm a little bit surprised at your line of questions, to be quite frankly. Well, you got a really hot player. Who yeah, we got a lot of hot players. Again, again, we, we uh, I, I mean, when I tell you, literally, we have a, a hundred plays we can run, and they'll attest to that. So sometimes you call you call something that work, sometimes they don't. That's the that's the nature of it. Well, uh, we were obviously you know disappointed that we that we lost a game, but here's what I said to the players uh, in the locker room: how proud I am of them, not a, only the way we fought the second half and came back and gave ourselves a chance to win, but what they did this year. The fact that Dez and, and Marcus and Elijah, they, they, they bought in, they embraced what we were trying to do. So they've, they've set the tone for what I believe is what, what's to come. Had they not done so, we would not have finished the season. We won four of our last five coming into the game tonight. So I liken it to uh, they ran the first leg of the relay. And so now they're passing the baton. And the next leg is responsible for what? Running a little faster, a little faster. So they ran a great first leg. And as a result, uh, I think we're in much better shape for that second and that third and that anchor leg because of, because of the season that they, the, the effort they gave, the way they bought in, the way they grew, the way they embraced change. And change is never easy. So that sort, sort of sums it up. Uh, and again, we, we could not be in better, better hands uh, at this point, given all of this transpired. And it's, uh, it goes to those three, so much of the credit goes to the three seniors. I want to start with Marcus first. Just talk about your two years here and the excitement of coming to the MEAC tournament and, uh, and just kind of how you capital, capped off your career. Like the, my two years, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to make the best of it. I feel like me, Dez, and Elijah, we all just try to make the best of it because we all basically came from the same route, junior college to two uh, to four year university. So we just wanted to make something happen now. So we just try to put our all in it. Listen to our coaches last year. Listen to the uh, coaches this year. Just try our best. So that's basically it. There's no same question. <laughs> Just talk about your two years here, and um, you know your sense of accomplishment uh, over the over the last two years here playing basketball. Okay. Um, when I committed to Fanview, uh, no one knows real for like an odd reason because I had other offers from schools that were winning or winning programs, but. The way my mom raised me, like even when I went to junior college, I went to a junior college that had more like six games the year before I committed there. And so my second year there after my sophomore year, we went to back to the state tournament. The first time they did it in 10 years. When I got off of FAMU, I looked up to school and everything. 
they had a losing record before I came. And like my my mindset was come here and not and try to leave it better than what I what I found it. And so last year, you know, we made it to the first round, got put out. You know, this year, my mindset was let's take it a step forward. So at the end of the day, I want I want to say that <laughs> I left the program better than I found it. As long as like me, Marcus, Elijah, the seniors, as well as family, we blessing us with this coaching stuff. My my senior year is. It's been a great ride. It didn't end the way we wanted to, but when I look down the road and I look back, I know I can be able to say like, in the future years when we win, when family was winning, me at championships under our coaches staff, I can look back and say, oh, I was one of the pioneers that started that. So, you know, it's just a blessing to be here, a blessing to be in this situation and even make it this part of the tournament and be here with my coaches staff and my teammates, it's a blessing. I'm just thankful for it. And coach, the last question for me. Coach, just talk about your first time coming to the MIAC tournament and um, your overall view of the MIAC tournament. Well, obviously I'd like to still be playing, <laughs> but, but, but that aside, um, you know, so far it's, uh, it's good. It's good, and uh, what, what makes it good is that there, there are so many good coaches in the league. There are good coaches in the league. There are a lot of good players, a lot of good players, a lot of good young players. And so all of the teams that have seniors, there's so many good good freshmen in the league. And so what that tells you is that the league is still going to be good for years to come. And unfortunately, uh, on a national level, uh, we don't get the, the, the credit that we deserve. Mm -hmm. But uh, and I, I, I think I'm as qualified as anyone to speak on this subject. I've coached, I've coached in every major conference in the country and probably half of the mid-majors and so with that experience uh, I know how underrated the coaches are the outstanding job uh, that they do and there's so many good players uh, in the league and uh, I talked to uh, an NBA scout just last week and he's talking about you know freshmen and sophomore players in, the league, in our league that they already have their eyes on and so that 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 speaks volumes for, for the league, and unfortunately, on a national scale, uh, we don't get the credit that we deserve. But uh, it's been a good experience, and uh, I think Thursday, Friday, and Saturday uh, should be should be uh, even a lot more fun. Thank you.